uh, meeting, this uh, webinar, uh, this um, seminar, which is part of our webinar series on uh, key topics in uh, regional science and economic uh, geography. Uh, this series uh, uh, of, semi of online seminars is particularly aimed at uh, gra graduate students, especially starting with our uh, community of PhD students. But it's open uh, to everyone uh, who is joining. In fact, we have been disseminating uh, all uh, these seminars uh, uh, across the, the web space, mainly East and uh, Facebook and uh, all other uh, uh, social uh, media platforms. Um, very happy today to, to have uh, with us uh, uh, Professor Sami Moisio, who is Professor of uh, Geography and Spatial Planning uh, in the Department of Geography and uh, uh, Geosciences of the uh, University of uh, Helsinki. And uh, uh, Sami is a, is a great scholar, I think, and he's a, a very uh, uh, um, influential contributor to debates, especially in the field of uh, critical geopolitics and political geography. Uh, for more than, uh, I don't know, 25 years, he's been breathing in this uh, field. Uh, in recent times, he has uh, uh, expanded uh, his understanding of uh, political geography uh, uh, touching especially on issues of regional development and urban uh, uh, regeneration strategies. He's been uh, uh, theorizing uh, the, what he calls the strategic urbanization of the state. Perhaps he will uh, tell something uh, uh, us uh, about this, uh, how the, the state is kind of urbanizing itself in terms of uh, strategies that is uh, uh, devising uh, in, in terms of style of governance. Um, uh, so I, I think his work is really relevant because it really cuts across different domains of uh, uh, of the field of geography, from political geography to economic geography to urban studies to regional development studies. So it, it really offers a quite wide encompassing uh, uh, view of the of, of the field. And uh, the, all these ideas have uh, somehow converged. This idea of applying uh, uh, political geography to the study of the economy uh, and of uh, urban economies, more particularly, have, have converged in his uh, latest book, uh, which is uh, uh, entitled, like this seminar, Ge Geopolitics of the Knowledge Based Economy. We all know that we are living uh, at a time in which knowledge has become. Uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, very valuable uh, asset in our economies and so is providing us uh, with uh, a critical understanding of uh, why cities and urban space uh, have been uh, have become central to this uh, knowledge based uh, uh, economy uh, uh, at the global uh, uh, level uh, so he's in, in the book is engaging very nicely with the contemporary debates uh, touching on issues of creative urbanism on uh, ideas of uh, what i personally called city enthusiast gurus like uh, Richard Florida or Edward Glazer and other urban uh, uh, economies and, and urban uh, uh, planners. Uh, but uh, before I, I, I give the floor to, to, uh, to Sami for his uh, 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 lecture, uh, the lecture will, uh, if Sami agrees, uh, will uh, uh, we have two hours ahead. Usually we have uh, like uh, 50 minutes or 55 minutes, whatever you want, uh, in the first part. Then uh, we have uh, uh, perhaps uh, some small questions uh, uh, asking for clarifications of uh, specific uh, uh, points, specific uh, aspects that are uh, not uh, uh, clear. Then we have a short break. And then in the second part, in the second hour, uh, we will have a, a debate and we can fight. No, I'm joking. We can have a, a, a debate on uh, your uh, ideas. Um, so before I, I give uh, the floor to, to Professor Moisio, uh, I want to, uh, 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 I would ask uh, uh, Professor Fajan, Alessandra Fajan, I would ask Alessandra to, uh, uh, to, to say something and to uh, uh, introduce our webinar uh, series. Thanks, Alessandra. Thank you, Hugo, and thank you, Sami, for being here with us today. Just very briefly, I won't take any of your time. I just wanted to thank you for two things. First of all, for accepting to be part of this uh, webinar series. We just started, you know, less than a month ago, a few weeks ago. And so you are among the first to join us in this adventure. 
The second reason why I want to thank you is for joining our teaching committee, teaching uh, board, actually, uh, for the PhD program. Uh, we slightly changed the focus of our PhD program this year, which is now called Regional Science and Economic Geography. So it's uh, a PhD which is meant to be interdisciplinary, especially with a focus on applied economics and uh, um, economic geography, but with a focus on the role of space. So anything that has to do with uh, the space itself. Um, and so it's very important for us to have your contribution in our teaching committee and also, of course, your presentation today, which I'm really looking forward to hearing. Before we start, I just want to ask a, a very quick question. Is everybody uh, OK with this being recorded? We, of course, ask the speaker. Uh, for his consent, but if you are not willing to be recorded, you have to leave the meeting and look, uh, watch the seminar via our um, um, online platform, uh, YouTube. We have a YouTube channel because this meeting is going to be recorded. So if you stay here, we assume that you have we have your consent to be recorded. Uh, thank you very much, and I'm really looking forward to hear your talk and discuss that later. Thank you, Sami. Thank you, Alessandra, and uh, thanks for reminding the privacy issue, which is a, a customary request we, we make. So thanks, Sami, you can uh, start your uh, presentation and your talk. Thank you very much. Do you hear, do you see this uh, presentation now? Yeah. Okay, no, it's because I, 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 I cannot see you, so I, I only see this, uh, this screen. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, uh, many, many thanks for the, for the invitation. I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased uh, to be part of this uh, seminar series, and I also am very excited to work with you also uh, in the capacity of, uh, of uh, external uh, faculty board uh, member. And uh, it's, it's really nice to to uh, be uh, involved, as I, as I, as I said earlier. Um, Ugo was asking uh, about the topic of my, uh, of my presentation, and I decided to, uh, to propose something dealing with, uh, dealing with my uh, latest project, uh, which, is, uh, which I have labeled as geopolitics of the knowledge-based economy. And uh, I started this project some, some already some uh, some years ago, and uh, and and this whole present presentation is is uh, has been uh, actually produced before the this uh, coronavirus uh, situation. So I have nothing, I have nothing here uh, dealing with the uh, the the virus or the COVID COVID nineteen uh, crisis. But uh, obviously, we can also reflect this uh, virus in, in terms of what I'm what I'm saying within the next uh, fifty minutes, fifty minutes or or so. Uh, the the basic starting point of this project um, was that uh, I, I discovered some years ago that uh, that uh, the term geopolitics is 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 hardly ever associated with the term uh, knowledge based economy or knowledge intensive capitalism more broadly. Uh, journalists, uh, all kinds of um, politicians, they don't uh, make such a link, link in their articulations and geopolitics textbooks, uh, political geography books, economic geography books and urban studies books are, are fairly silent on the issue. But still, at the same time, I, I recognize, and we all recognize, that over the past 20 years or so, and especially uh, during the past 15 years or 10 years, the air has been full of uh, all kinds of popular argumentation, also scholarly argumentation, concerning how we are currently living, living in an era marked by, uh, by, by the prominence of knowledge in all societal, economic, and cultural developments as well as we hear pronouncements about the knowledge-intensive form of capitalism as an important subtext for interstate relations and, and even interspatial competition. So I, I, I decided that it's probably high time to start pondering what is the kind of interrelationship between 
between uh, these two concepts, the uh, knowledge-intensive capitalism or the knowledge-based economy and, and geopolitics. And, and therefore also uh, I, I decided that this whole uh, inquiry I'm, I'm making uh, or my project and, and also my talk today is, is uh, analytical and conceptual and the goal is somehow to raise new new questions rather than rather than answering old concerns so i i have a fairly little uh, empirical material today in my talk rather i'm making this kind of conceptual uh, conceptual argument uh, opening up the relationship or the interlinkage between geopolitics and knowledge based economy so i have a couple of aspects in the presentation first we are going to discuss the uh, the knowledge the concept of the knowledge based economy more generally in, in general. Secondly, we, we go through uh, the idea of knowledge-based economization. It, it is a concept I have been developing in, in, in my project. Then we look at some of the geopolitical, geopolitical aspects of or dimensions of knowledge-based uh, economization. Also some of the qualitative shifts this has taken over the past uh, 20 years or 30 years. And, and then we uh, we discuss some of the crisis tendencies of knowledge-based economization as as the, these emerge in, in, in front of us. Uh, obviously, what I'm going to uh, talk about today is it is a story that starts from the 1980s. So I'm touching upon uh, touching on uh, an era uh, from the 1980s onwards, and and the societal shift which. Uh, has taken place uh, from the 1980s onwards, and and of course, and you probably recognize also these uh, uh, colors of uh, of the Italian flag here. But um, uh, uh, you recognize that there are also some sort of overlapping literatures dealing with uh, this particular period or era. Uh, we have this whole uh, interesting literature dealing with uh, how we have been experiencing a shift from uh, managerialism to entrepreneurialism. This is uh, something that is very, uh, very much discussed in our uh, in the in the scholarly literature of our field. Secondly, we have this uh, massive literature dealing with uh, the process of neoliberalism. Uh, in particular, the shift from the so-called rollback neoliberalism to roll out neoliberalism and then we also have a, a related debate dealing with how we have been um, uh, kind of moving away from the so-called information societies of the 1990s late 1980s and 1990s to the so-called datafication of, of societies which we have been experiencing over the past uh, over the past years so there are some these overlapping literatures are, are worth uh, worth mentioning here so that you are somehow able to locate this this uh, this argument i'm i'm making so it is uh it is uh, it has uh, some uh, it resonates with very much with some of these discussions or debates uh in 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 our in, in our field in regional studies urban studies political and economic geography so the starting point is uh, here that we are dealing with uh, not uh, we are dealing with the so-called actually existing economy. So I start to start uh, from citing Karl Polanyi, uh, who argues that economy is an instituted process, and economic activities are always em embedded in a complex array of social relations, extra economic as well as economic institutions. And, and this is something something important. So I'm actually interested in the political and social construction or production of of uh, economic forms, uh, what I call kind of knowledge intensive capitalism. So for me, it is it is the actually exist, actually existing economy, uh, and and from this perspective, it is an instituted process uh, which brings together the extra economic and the economic. And uh, and the importance of extra economic is 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 uh, uh, is um, important to realize in this context, as it gives uh, the so-called relative stability and predictability in capital accumulation over certain periods of time, in spite in spite of these uh, crisis tendencies of, of of capitalism. 
and and as we move on we we recognize that this uh, extra economic is is an important part of the um, of, of of my of my story also what i uh, what i emphasized uh, throughout my presentation is the role the crucial role of the of the political and and the state in in somehow mediating responses to crisis in capitalism and also the role of the state in actually putting together the actually existing economy what we might call uh, uh, the knowledge based economy i have uh, i'm not going to go through these very very carefully but uh, uh, my my theoretical standing here it uh, somehow resonates with uh, with those arguments uh, presented in the field of cultural political economy uh, and uh, in particular i highlight uh, throughout the presentation that uh, that uh, the, both the semiotic and the material uh, uh, in the context of, of, of kind of constituting uh, the knowledge-based economy. So both the semiotic and the material are, are, are important. Uh, uh, my focus is uh, in particular on the spatial constitution of the knowledge-based economy, which is the socialization aspect of it, and, and also uh, uh, the, the primacy of competitiveness and competition in, in, in this uh, form of, of economy. Also, I highlight uh, that the knowledge-based economy is under periodic qualitative shifts. The knowledge-based economy or the knowledge-intensive capitalism we had in the early 1990s has been qualitatively changing and, and, uh, and, and always it is under, under, uh, under some kind of reconstruction, reworking. And this also points to the crisis tendencies of the knowledge-based economy and and actually it is therefore also very difficult to forecast they that uh, you know the what the future holds for the uh, for the knowledge-based economy as a as a system of accumulation and finally that there is a, a specific speciality in in the uh, uh, in the uh, knowledge-based economy as as a as a regime of accumulation and therefore it is kind of geopolitic uh, ge uh, uh, knowledge based economy politics of of place which which also characterizes this uh, system of accumulation so the shift we are talking about here is is the one uh, which became evident already in the 1990s but it became even more salient uh, uh, some 15 20 years ago when uh, many uh, politicians and uh, and um, policymakers uh, intellectuals and debateurs uh, started to articulate very uh, uh, forcefully uh, the uh, the shift from the so-called uh, 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 kind of natural resource economies or, or natural resource based economies towards knowledge based towards knowledge based economies uh, as a political strategy so that so that this shift is taking place and 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 the states and the politicians should do their best in order to kind of incorporate their states or their cities or their regions with uh, with the knowledge uh, intensive form of capitalism in in order to secure a success uh, political and economic success uh, here you can see one, one uh, quote from Jeff uh, Mulgan, the former director of policy under the British uh, Prime Minister Tony Blair, and also uh, another one from the Organization of American States. And both of these articulate a kind of uh, attempt to move from the past towards, uh, towards future as a, as a political strategy, from, from natural resources uh, towards uh, uh, knowledge-based uh, uh, systems. So this uh, this shift has been very very sa salient, especially within the OECD world, but also in some other corners of the of the world. Of course, my presentation today is is slightly more focused on on the OECD sphere rather uh, rather than some other uh, other parts of the world. Dunning uh, quite nicely uh, discloses his quote discloses this shift quite nicely. Uh, he's talking about uh, the main source of, uh, of wealth in market economies and how it is uh, switching from natural assets 
through tangible created assets to intangible created assets. And this story has been repeated thousands of times in different places over the past uh, 20, 20 years. Uh, also, not only as something that has been taken place, but also as a political strategy. So that there has to be this shift. We have to make this shift from, from the old world uh, to, uh, towards the so-called uh, new, new world. Um, there are uh, some uh, some very uh, typical ways to uh, to portray the the content of the knowledge based economy. One is uh, by Peters, uh, pretty uh, famous interpretation of of the knowledge based economy and what does it uh, what it stands for. Um, it uh, uh, in this uh, articulation. Uh, the knowledge-based economy is understood to highlight the growing relative significance of knowledge compared with traditional factors of production, natural resources, physical capital, and low-skill labor. Uh, and, and it's all about wealth, uh, wealth creation uh, and, and competitive advantage. An important concept here is, is mentioned. Um, uh, it, it also highlights the the role of research and development, higher education and knowledge intensive industries, uh, media, entertainment, and these kind of things. And these are usually these kind of things are usually associated with the concept of, of the knowledge based economy, as you know. Uh, another one, uh, uh, a very uh, revealing um, and, and, and apt uh, uh, Definition of the knowledge based economy is made by uh, Sam and uh, Sum and Jessup. Uh, they talk about uh, uh, the knowledge based economy as an actually existing economy, uh, whereby the primary aspect of capital is the valorization of the general intellect in the form of knowledge and design intensive commodities. And, and they also make, uh, uh, make an, another, uh, another uh, important. Um, uh, uh, argument regarding how, as part of the knowledge-based economy devel de development, uh, most of the economic sectors at least try to become more knowledge-intensive. And this is something we have recognized in different geographical contexts quite a bit, so that this kind of injection of knowledge into most of the economic sectors, at least this attempt, has been uh, very, very visible, causing a lot of headache for some Sec uh, economic sectors that how to actually inject this knowledge component into the uh, into the uh, uh, into some of the economic sectors in order to produce more value, more economic value there. Obviously, uh, in my presentation, I associate uh, the knowledge-based economy with different forms, uh, different uh, dimensions of of capitalism. Uh, the world of, pro of production, as was already mentioned uh, by Peters and also by uh, Zoom and Jessup, uh, but also built environment becomes, you know, uh, interestingly part of, of uh, the knowledge-based economy. So we, we, we all know these science parks and, and, and uh, technopoles and, and soft infrastructures in urban spaces uh, as becoming uh, uh, important constitu constituents of of the knowledge-based uh, economy. Uh, also, uh, the third circuit of capital, which is the knowledge and human capital, of course, is, 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 uh, is uh, absolutely essential in the context of the knowledge-based economy. So these spaces of learning, science, research, education more generally, these are very, very important aspects of the, of the knowledge-based economy. Those, so from the first circuit, the, the circuit of production, to the third circuit, this is all, all relevant. Uh, from uh, uh, these are all important dimensions of the of the knowledge based economy, of course. Um, it is interesting, actually, also to, uh, to to think about the knowledge based economy as a particular type of spatial spatial political economic imaginary. And, and as, a, as, a, as a spatial political economic imaginary, it is, it is very interesting. So this, this whole notion of imaginary somehow also uh, uh, hints that, uh, that uh, this knowledge-based economy is discursively produced. And this ima these imaginaries dealing with this economy itself 
are very important for the constitution of the of the economy. And and quite often we we hear that um, that the knowledge based economy uh, 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 carries a promise of a sort of positive collective and clean future. It is an important interesting part of the uh, part of the uh, knowledge based economy as uh, as a spatial political economic imaginary. It also somehow divides these imaginaries dealing with the knowledge based economy divide the world into some sort of zones in terms of value creation and represent regional uh, divisions within national economic spaces uh, so that uh, these imaginaries also rep reproduces the state as, a, as an economic territory. So in some parts of the, the, of the state you have, as for instance in the Italian context, you have recognized the, uh, uh, all kinds of efforts to, to, to build uh, smart cities there and, you know, so that there are zones of, of creativity and, 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 and action which are then divided or, or different compared with some other regions in international space which are less con associated with associated with this uh, uh, with the knowledge-based economy as a spatial polit political economic imaginary uh, it is also interesting as an imaginary because it produces a new geographical trauma on a global scale so the 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 imaginaries of the knowledge-based economy, they often portray uh, a sort of drama uh, whereby regions, cities and states are somehow competing against, against each other uh, in terms of creativity, uh, uh, value creation capacities, uh, innovative ideas and, and these kind of things. So it's all about competition uh, on a global scale, but now not in terms of uh, 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 kind of uh, 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 this is not military competition, but this is a kind of different kind of competition now. Um, and also importantly, uh, the imaginaries of the knowledge-based economy also highlight the role of a particular type of subjectivity and human capital in in the kind of national efforts. Uh, towards value creation uh, in the age of global economy. So this uh, kind of creative population or creative segments of population, uh, high skilled, uh, innovative, the innovative type, all kinds of uh, these, these, uh, these segments of population become central uh, in, in, uh, also in political strategies. So if we understand the knowledge-based economy as a, as a spatial political economic imaginary, we also have to take into account this kind of uh, the kind of the subjectivity aspect of it. And also, what is interesting uh, in terms of the of the knowledge knowledge-based economy uh, uh, and how it materializes and how how it is constituted spatially is that all kinds of technopoles, clusters, urban agglomeration economies creative cities, startup cities, economies firms, smart cities, learning regions, uh, innovative innovation centers, happy cities, innovation ecosystems, uh, to name but a few, these have emerged as, as key kind of idea national, kind of idea elements in developing political communities spatially. And, and these kind of terms, technopoles, clusters, they have become important discursive uh, elements of of of, of how uh, through which uh, to, to how to develop uh, political community spatially over the past 20 years so obviously uh, after these uh, after these remarks dealing with the knowledge based economy uh, i i i'm already highlighting the um, the nature of this form of uh, economy as something which is uh, it's it's a process it is nothing it is not a stagnant kind of uh, it is not um, fixed but it is a, it is a, it's an ongoing process and and therefore i have been uh, calling it um, i have been trying to make this conceptual distinction between the knowledge based economy and knowledge knowledge based economization and i have been trying to conceptualize the knowledge-based uh, knowledge economization as a, as a process, which brings together certain kind of different kinds of elements. 
and and this uh, this uh, first of all of course this concept knowledge based economization it highlights uh, the more general process of economization which which has been uh, which is discussed in in uh, in the literature in scientific literature quite quite a bit economization how social issues are economized how all kinds of elements are sucked into the uh, into the sphere of uh, of economy, uh, but at the same time, it also tries to somehow portray the process in which economic issues are translated into social matters, so that uh, the world of economy, the global economy of innovation, it is socialized somehow, uh, uh, so that cities, regions and states become also units of competition. They become societies which are then uh, portrayed as, as units of competition uh, on, on a global scale. So this economization takes to these, both of these forms. Social issues are economicized and, and economic issues are translated into social matters. Um, the concept of knowledge-based economization also highlights that uh, that uh, um, that knowledge itself, particular type of knowledge, expert knowledge in particular, uh, is important in the process of making things uh, uh, knowledge-based economic. So that the, in the process of economization, uh, particular type of knowledge operates within that process. And I, I uh, later in my presentation, I'm going to introduce a couple of these uh, expert knowledges, which have been very, very important in in constituting the uh, the knowledge-based economy as a as, as a sort of political system or geopolitical system. Um, so the knowledge-based economy. Uh, economization is is something uh, it's it's a process in which the state also plays a key role it is uh, it is it's an important player within that uh, within that uh, uh, that game so to speak it becomes uh, uh, an important um, a kind of uh, actor in not only constituting but al also maintaining the knowledge-based economy as a, as a regime of accumulation. And, and one important way how it, for instance, how we see that happening is that, uh, that the state, uh, uh, state po power is used to somehow nationalize and territorialize this global economic, uh, economic uh, drama. So that really the state becomes, it becomes a national unit here and, and all kinds of Economic nationalism has been also part of the uh, part of the knowledge-based economy um, uh, uh, project, so so to speak. And this is something we see clearly also now in the context of China and the U.S., for instance, economic nationalism in China now uh, dealing with the, uh, the knowledge-intensive capitalism. The same the same applies to the U.S. And in my in uh, in the context uh, from which I'm writing, Finland, we recognized already in the 1990s that some of these uh, uh, big uh, ICT companies became sort of national champion firms, which were effectively territorialized around the state of Finland. So that we 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 were supposed to be very proud of those companies, even though 90% of those companies were owned by. Uh, by the U.S. Uh, by the American uh, American pension funds or something like that, we were anyhow supposed to be very proud of those companies, and this kind of economic nationalism was an important part of the uh, part part of the emergence of of the knowledge based economy in the in the Finnish context. Uh, there are a couple of dimensions. I'm going to uh, I'm going to send these slides after my presentation. So if somebody is interested in 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 how I conceptualize the knowledge-based economization, I I uh, then you are able to read these uh, on on my on my slides. But uh, but I just uh, quickly skip skip these ones. And I I 
make a, another conceptual a distinction dealing with the so the knowledge in knowledge based economization what what does it um, what does it mean uh, what does it stand for in this context so knowledge uh, in the in the context of knowledge based economization first of all refers to the role of ideas and rel related innovations in generating value economic value in the production chain so this is the first circuit of circuit of capital and and it's an important part of that we know the role of engineers has been very very central and also all kinds of other valuable uh, uh, knowledge is uh, uh, in, in the production process. Secondly, knowledge in, in, in the context of knowledge-based economization refers to, uh, to, uh, to the knowledge production by experts, professionals and academics on the knowledge-intensive form of capitalism itself. And this, in my understanding, plays a crucial role in, in putting together uh the knowledge-based economy and and all kinds of experts professionals academics have been have been central in in producing the economic imaginary of the of this of this dealing with this economy in the first place thirdly knowledge in knowledge-based economization refers to the sort of ceaseless gathering of data in the on the development and performance of political communities as knowledge-based economies so we know that you know there's a lot of all kinds of uh, companies have emerged also from the 1990s onwards as as uh, as producing uh, for instance indices dealing with uh, uh, dealing with the knowledge based economy so it is not only organizations such as the world economic forum but also all kinds of um, uh, companies who are uh, for instance, measuring the performance of universities, and 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 this kind of that data industry has 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 also and related businesses is uh, somehow also interesting in the context of 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 the knowledge based uh, of knowledge based economization as a process. And one important aspect of this data is that it really is important in measuring. The sort of competitiveness and success of cities, regions, and states uh, in this global competition uh, in the field of, on the field of, of knowledge-intensive capitalism. So this knowledge has been also important in, in somehow uh, reifying uh, cities, states, and uh, and regions as units of of, of competition. And, and finally, more recently, also knowledge in knowledge-based economization refers to the sort of uh, datafication of society. And this datafication of society is important, I believe, also it's kind of the latest development uh, in, in some sense. And, and, and this um, is the, uh, refers to the process whereby different aspects of people's, uh, of people's lives are ter turned into data and then this data can be transferred uh, into information and then realized as a form of economic value so this has been very very important and and and, and also uh, very very um, uh, illuminating over the past a couple of years and and this also is important this form of knowledge because uh, these commercial infrastructures of of, uh, of these uh, so-called big tech uh, clearly have the potential uh, to deliver forms of behavioral government. For instance, uh, um, in in uh, and and this has been also part one one aspect of the privatization of state government uh, in in UK in the UK, for instance. So the so-called neuro neuro neuroliberalism 2.0, which means that that um, these uh, tech companies and the government are, are, are forming new kinds of uh, um, or coming together and forming new kinds of uh, kind of uh, governance spaces uh, uh, which then affect uh, the life of ordinary people and and these kind of these kind of uh, uh, dimensions we can we can single out uh, regarding knowledge in knowledge-based economization 
So my addition to this whole whole uh, literature on on the knowledge-based economy or or uh, knowledge-intensive capitalism, of course, it has been very little. But what I have been trying to add to the uh, uh, to the debate is the kind of the geopolitics of of that. And there is too little work on on the geopolitical in the context of the knowledge-based economy. And, and and this is something what I have been uh, 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 trying trying to do. And one one important thing here is that um, that we have a tendency to somehow uh, to have a very narrow view of the of the geopolitical. So we very often understand the geopolitical uh, as as um, as referring to. Uh, uh, kind of um, territorial uh, territorial occupation of territorial space or kind of uh, enmities between states which then are um, then become visible in terms of you know uh, waging uh, uh, waging war over territories and and um, this kind of uh, territorial space very much uh, still uh, uh, or the dominance of territorial space very much characterizes our thinking on on the concept of the of, of the geopolitical, and it in my ter in in my understanding it's a very narrow view of the of the geopolitical, and uh, and uh, uh, I have been trying to somehow um, redefine the concept of the geopolitical in the context of of the knowledge based uh, economy and. And I have been somehow applying my view from critical political geography, from critical geopolitics, to have a to have a slightly uh, uh, relaxed, more relaxed view on 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 the concept of geopolitics uh, than what the kind of orthodox understanding of the concept would would in, entail. So I understand geopolitics form of discourse and uh, as a form of productive power it is about reshaping the world spatially uh it is uh it refers in my terminology to the production of 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 the territories of wealth power and belonging even the even the um uh even the military occupation of 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 territorial space quite often actually denotes uh the production of territories of wealth power and belonging and and it is these are not uh, uh, mutually exclusive but my in my in my usage the the understanding of of geopolitics as the production of territories of wealth power and belonging obviously also uh, 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 opens up space for understanding the economic uh, also in the context of the of the geopolitical uh, more broadly uh, geopolitics also refers to, to mastering space, both territorial and relational space. So the relational space of, of uh, for instance, uh, relational space uh, here uh, refers to uh, global value chains. And, and, and global value chain, for instance, is a, is a peculiar geopolitical space in the context of, of uh, knowledge-intensive capitalism. Uh, we have recognized uh, over the past 20 years that uh, that the state power, for instance, uh, or the state has uh, state governments in different contexts have have been um, have been committed to major efforts to somehow territorialize the global value chain, which is the world of firms. Basically, they have been trying to territorialize it, uh, for instance. Uh, through attracting certain type of economic activi activities in their territory, dealing with, for instance, research and development, marketing and uh, financing, insurance, all those activities which are uh, taking place in the kind of upper uh, upper um, uh, ladders of, of the value chain, where a lot of economic value is produced. So this kind of relational world of 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 the global value chain is effectively uh, territorialized in state-related action uh, in the context of knowledge-based economization. When I use the concept of the, geopolit the geopolitical in, in my in my work, I uh, in the context of the of the knowledge-based economy, I'm obviously interested in, interested in the kind of uh, uh, geopolitics of the moral, cultural, and intellectual 
authority of the kind of Silicon, Silicon Valley worldview of the world and capitalism. And how this has been spreading uh, over the past uh, few decades and how it is actually taking place in, in, in many geographical contexts and also beyond uh, the OECD world. So this kind of uh, Silicon, Silicon uh, Valley world uh, is, is, has been spreading, as we know, quite, uh, quite interestingly. And, and there's a lot of geopolitics in, in, in that. It's a geopolitical uh, uh, way, of, way of understanding how, the, uh, how territories of wealth, power and belonging are constructed. And therefore, uh, in the end, uh, my, uh, at the center of my, uh, my treatment of the geopolitics of the knowledge-based economy, it's a sort of hubs and flows world. And, and, and how these hubs and flows, hubs and flows re, uh, referring here to the, the constant mobility or the mobility of capital and innovative people and creative class and, 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 uh, and, and money, money capital, how this is, how, how political forces and the state in particular, but also cities and regions, how they try to somehow uh, territorialize it. This, this world of hubs and flows, the world of innovative cities, major cities, and you know what is what is taking place between these uh, these hubs, you know, and and this is the kind of the geopolitical world I'm interested in, and and my one of my arguments actually in the book or in my project has been that if you look at the contemporary geopolitical condition. Uh, it is it, it's it's a it's it's about two things you know this kind of world of uh, of uh, of military power and uh, occupying of territories of course it has not ceased to be important it is still there of course in many places and states are waging war over territories and you know uh, territorial enmity still exist and you know the basic territorial power the kind of the old geopolitical territorial power is still there but then we have this other world another world which is the kind of the innovation world and and the world of hubs and flows and and this is as much present as is the other one so the contemporary geopolitical condition is a is a combination of these two and sometimes these even come together very interestingly uh one as i already already said uh in the context of of uh, of china and and the us for instance uh, it is very interesting to recognize that how how this kind of um, they have been launching both both the U.S. and China uh, launching policies through which they seek to somehow own and protect uh, intellectual property as if intellectual property was fixable to territory. It is very interesting interesting in in, in this context. Uh, and, and both of these states uh, have recently tried to somehow divide the world into spheres of some sort of technological influence. Uh, and, and this, in, in, in such a geopolitical contest, uh, the US government supports American companies, the so-called American companies, Intel, Microsoft, Cisco, Oracle, Google, you name it, in their attempts to, constru uh, to construct critical technological infrastructures for digitalization in, in different corners of the, of the world. And at the same time, the Chinese government uh, seeks to assist Chinese corporations such as Huawei in constructing technological infrastructures abroad. And, and in, 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 in this sense, for China and, and for the US, the struggle for geopolitical dominance takes place through competition between critical technologies and infrastructures provided by their national champion firms. And, and, and this, um, as part of this territorial struggle over technological influence, some states have already barred some Chinese corporations as agents, some sort of agents of Chinese state power. And this has been very illuminating uh, from from this angle so that how this world of 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 the, of uh, uh, knowledge intensive capitalism this global uh, seemingly global world is effectively territorialized in in this kind of uh, 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 in this kind of power politics which uh, takes place uh, in the world uh, at, uh, in in front of us actually so this kind of uh, securitization of techn technological tech 
development has been clearly a significant element of contemporary knowledge-based economization in, in, uh, from, from that angle. Um, I still have some, some 10 minutes, so I will, I will uh, use my time to, uh, to, uh, to further specify some of these things dealing with, uh, with the geopolitics of, of, of knowledge-based economization. And uh, and what I what I really try to emphasize in my reading as as the geopolitics of knowledge based economization, uh, it somehow brings together the kind of the territorial uh, or the territorial re-territorialization of states, regions, and and cities, and and the constant crafting of of new kinds of subjectivities. Uh, which are understood as being, you know, valuable for the operation of of of, of the uh, knowledge-intensive capital. So this uh, resonates a bit with the uh, with the argument which was already made uh, 20 years ago by uh, Hard and Negri and people like that who were somehow highlighting the fact that the world is becoming a new sort of new kind of empire, you know, which operates through this kind of. Um, uh, extraction of value and, and uh, val valorization and and how uh, places and and subject subject human subjects become part of the part of the new game what they call empire so this resonates a bit with their with their logic here uh, I already mentioned uh, in in, uh, in some of uh, some of the earlier slides that I I, I think that uh, that this kind of um, uh, uh, expert knowledges have important constitutive role in the process of, of knowledge-based economization. And I think one of the most fascinating phenomena we have had uh, from the 1990s onwards is, is, the, is, is the emergence of, of, of a new kind of world of competition and competitiveness. And this story is, is very, very important also in the context of, of knowledge-based economization and its, its geopolitics. And how, how the, how the re-spatialization of competition has really taken place and what kind of expert knowledge has, has, has played a role in that. And, and in, my, in my work, I have been analyzing the work of Michael Porter and, and some other, uh, together with some other uh, kind of management, uh, business manage, management knowledge gurus. And how they started in the early, uh, late 1980s already, how they started to portray the new world and, and, and the new competition in that world. And, and if, if you look at the, um, the process of knowledge-based economization, you, of course, immediately recognize the sheer importance of this type of business management knowledge there. So if you think about the geopolitical world of the of the 20th century, and 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 there is the uh, you know the Machiavelli are from Italy, so most of you from Italy, the Machiavelli and 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 and, and all kinds of uh, thinkers dealing with uh, the old geopolitics. So now these new expert knowledges they do not come from military academias anymore. These geopolitical knowledges are produced in business schools. And, and this is the relational world of, of geopolitics. And, and if you want to know more about how, what is the kind of the foundation, what are the foundational logics or geopolitical logics of this world, then you have to take a look at these, uh, these uh, Bibles, so to speak, because these are very, very important. They somehow disclose uh, the logic of this, uh, the, uh, the, competi uh, the logic of competition. Uh, in the contemporary context of, of what I call knowledge-based economization. So these are very, very important uh, uh, aspects uh, of, of, of the story. And we have to understand the operation of these, uh, these, uh, these knowledges in the process of knowledge-based economization in order to understand how it is becoming increasingly the world of hubs and flows. Also, what is important is to recognize the, the importance of higher education and institutions of higher education as, as, as geopolitical sites in knowledge-based economization. And these have been very, very interesting, uh, uh, very, very interesting shifts in the world of higher education over the past 20, 30 years, and, and how there has been uh, what somebody called war over universities during that time. 
some uh, some segments of, of of knowledge intensive capital of course want to see universities increasingly as innovation machines and producing knowledge which then can be easily commercialized they should become a sort of spaces of uh, innovations and 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 many universities uh, uh, across the globe have also of course reworking themselves in order to meet uh, the requirements of the time so to speak and new learning environments have uh, emerged and and even whole uh, kind of uh, new universities have been founded in in my book i analyze one uh, the founding of a new university in finland uh, uh, and and the whole process was about um, kind of uh, upscaling the Finnish state in the world of uh, technological universities, kind of, university of universities of technology. So it was a very state-centered process uh, to to, to uh, bring about a new le learning environments and to produce what they called a new global engineer. So in their terminology, the old engineer was too uh, having uh, having uh, wrong capacities, and and this uh, old old engineer was uh, was useful in the context of the 20th century world, when the welfare state construction took place, and when all kinds of economic activities dealing with uh, the then national champion firms took place. But but this um, higher education now became part of 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 uh, kind of of qualitatively changing the inner logic of engineers in Finland in order to be capable of producing economic value in the new context. And so this is very interesting how universities have become part of the part of the story too. And also one one uh, aspect in my story is of course the uh, uh, the role of cities. And, and the role of major cities and and how what I call city geopolitics has become an important part of the knowledge of the process of knowledge based economization and and the state orchestrated territorialization of knowledge intensive capitalism happens primarily through the opera operationalization of major cities and urban spaces and and this is a kind of urbanization of capital or even capitalization of cities and which inheres in the process of knowledge-based economization. So quite interestingly, for instance, in many geographical contexts, cities are trying to somehow uh, 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 trying to uh, associate themselves with this new form of economy. And, and at the same time, they are all uh, um, becoming sort of capital cities. Capital cities, not anymore in the traditional sense, but capital cities in in the sense of being uh, kind of hubs of this new 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 economy, and and, and we can see some of these developments taking place. Of, for instance, the, how the knowledge-based or geopolitics of the knowledge-based economy and this this world of global competition, how it penetrates urban planning, for instance, and and how how the idea of of a dense um, urban space which is full of all kinds of amenities and creative people how it then becomes an innovation machine which then produces uh, econ economic value in itself and 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 this uh, this expert knowledge again uh, epitomized for instance uh, in uh, glazers edward glazers work triumph of the city or enrico moretti's work these are very very important kind of knowledge aspects through which uh, the knowledge-based economy, uh, economization proceeds in different places. So city and this knowledge together, you know, very important uh, parts of, of, of my story in, in, in that sense. And uh, we have been uh, together with Ugo discussing um, uh, the urbanization of the, of the state idea and, and what we call the startup, uh, startup state. And how it somehow the startup state as being the uh, the kind of the latest development uh, in in the process of knowledge based economization and how how then this um, uh, this startup um, startup state uh, means also that the state um, power is used to urbanize the internal space of the state selectively of course but in order to associate the state. Um, 
uh, with uh, with the uh, global knowledge uh, uh, global knowledge intensive capitalism. So there has been this spatial shift in knowledge based economization since the 1990s. I don't have time to go through these, but it is it started in the form of technopoles in the early 1990s, late 1980s. Then it became all about it was all about uh, star, smart urbanism and, and and smart cities some years ago, and then again a little bit of qualitative shift. Of course, smart cities are and discourse and practices are still there, but uh, this kind of startup urbanism is increasingly taking place, and 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 what what we call the urbanization of the state also uh, also is an important aspect of the of the of the latest uh, latest development uh, and finally uh, finally what is of course important to to recognize that uh, uh, when we talk about capitalism there are of course we we can recognize all kinds of crisis tendencies of of the of the knowledge based economy these are becoming evident of course or have become evident over the past over the past years sometimes it's uh, the falling rate of profit or over, uh, over production over accumulation these kind of things uh, uh, for instance uh, but what i want to highlight in my presentation here is the uh, is the uh, is the uh, societally divisive nature of knowledge based economization as as a broad geopolitical system and how it divides places and segments of population uh, quite effectively. It places a relatively narrow faction of population in the driver's seat of societal development. And, and then the, the reverse side of the coin, of course, is that, that, uh, uh, that there is this, uh, this, this kind of wide shadows, wide shadows uh, and which are not characterized by, by, uh, by its uh, kind of happy subjects, but rather something different. So the knowledge-based economization has the capacity really to abandon certain populations uh, and to situate them outside political normativity. And this is, of course, the uneven geographical development, which is kind of an inherent part of the process of, of, of knowledge-based economization. There are also many other interesting developments going on, related uh, developments. Nancy Fraser talks about uh, the kind of... Uh, uh, evaporation of the so-called progressive neoliberalism, uh, which uh, emerged in the 1990s, uh, the, the world of open, the world of open competition, you know, the, the global global knowledge-intensive capitalism, and you know, free movement of this and that, and and Nancy Fraser uh, recognizes that there is there has been, you know, in Brexit and Trump and all the rest of it, there has been a sort of. Uh, sort of uh, challenge towards this world and this is the world of 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 kind of silicon this is the silicon uh, valley world we are talking about now and and uh, and and this kind of progressive neoliberalism as as fraser calls it is if if it if uh, if, if it is now under challenge then what is going to what what is the what is the world which is going to replace that 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 old world and is it is going to uh, obviously, this is going to change also the logic and you know the whole these imaginaries dealing with the uh, the knowledge intensive capitalism, or at at least has the potential to change it and challenge it. Um, and 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 these uh, these crisis tendencies, of course, and the dark sides of knowledge based economization are very important also to recognize and to uh, to examine. And there's all, already a lot of literature dealing with, and also some popular, uh, uh, popul popular um, culture products uh, representing the kind of all kinds of dark sides of of, of knowledge-based economization, uh, and and these are becoming increasingly evident. Uh, and uh, this, the. Um, um, I don't probably have time now to go through all these uh, all these uh, things I, I I list here, but um, it is important to recognize not only the geographical, the uneven geographical uh, development aspect aspect of of uh, of knowledge based economization, 
But also um, these dark sides include the negative impacts of innovation on the demand for labor and on working conditions. This has been pointed out. All kinds of environmental consequences of the knowledge-based economy. It's, uh, it is uh, very energy consuming, for instance. The unequal gendering of, of the knowledge work. This has been, uh, been pointed out by colleagues. And the implications uh, for the institutions uh, of knowledge production, such as universities. So there is also some sort of pressure towards these institutions as this form of capitalism occupies uh, more, more space. And, and, and these are the kind of crisis tendencies, of course, and uh, internal contradictions of, of, of the knowledge-based economy, which are something that we have to, uh, we have to also uh, uh, recognize in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sami, for your excellent uh, presentation and uh, talk. I really enjoyed it. And um, um, I'm not sure if there is any, any question also from uh, YouTube, because we have at the same time some people who are attending from, uh, through U YouTube and uh, some other people are attending uh, through here, through Google Meet. So we can have uh, uh, questions from both uh, sides. Um, okay, if there is no question for uh, a clarification, because uh, in the first part we ask for a specific question, asking to clarify the specific aspects of the of the, uh, the, uh, the um, of the talk, and uh, so we can have uh, I think uh, eight minutes more or less uh, break. Uh, we can uh, relax a little bit, and uh, 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 if you want to, to have a coffee at your place, and, and then we can uh, restart. Uh, let's say at uh, uh, three uh, fifteen uh, or uh, around there. Okay, for uh, uh, for a debate on uh, on the knowledge based economy and uh, uh, Sami's uh, talk. Thank you. See you later. See you uh, in a few minutes. Thanks.
Uh, ok. Maybe we, we can... Uh, can you hear me? Yes? Yes? Okay. Uh, maybe we, we can uh, we can start. There is a couple of uh, questions from uh, Margherita Grazioli, uh, who is a postdoc uh, at our uh, institute, at the Grand Sasso Science Institute. So, and then uh, yes, and then also Francesco uh, uh, Lelli. So, uh, but we can start with Margherita. Please, Margherita. Okay, thank you very much, Sami, for uh, your presentation. It was extremely uh, fascinating and I would say extremely uh, timely as for the discussion we are uh, uh, having these days, I think, because we could think that this pandemic crisis is somehow highlighting many of uh, the issues uh, you were discussing. I have a couple of questions relating to uh, basically the last point you touched upon, which was the, the divi divisiveness of uh, knowledge-based economy. The first question was whether you've had the chance to reflect about the uh, connection between uh, knowledge-based uh, um, economy-related forms of urban governance and austerity urbanism, like how they have an impact uh, on the idea of uh, efficiency and, uh, let's say, also the progressive uh, um, reduction of welfare and uh, so on. And uh, the second one was, uh, let's say, triggered by the movie poster that you screen in one of your last slides uh, from the movie from Ken Loach. Uh, sorry, we missed you. Uh, I was wondering if you've had the chance to um, come across uh, some uh, experiences uh, or forms of organized resistance uh, ag against the um, downsides of knowledge-based economies because as you said i mean this kind of uh, a productive system is very peculiar whereby uh, the effects the reification are uh, well territorialized extremely material but they start from uh, uh, intangible infrastructure. So let's say uh, traditional forms of uh, unionism or social movements many times are unable to tackle uh, the source, uh, let's say, of these uh, uh, inequalities, the source of this value production, but they um, they have to just um, tackle the, the effects, the specialized reifications uh, of this uh, um, model of economic production. So for, I was wondering if you've come across some experiments uh, in, uh, in, this sense, in this sense. And uh, thank you so much again for your presentation. Uh, thank you, Margarita. Uh, I think Sami can uh, answer these first questions and uh, and then uh, we go ahead, please. Many, many thanks for these questions, Margarita. Very, very important questions. I, I'm afraid that I, I have not been studying these, uh, these aspects too much, but I, but I already recognize that these are, these are absolutely essential uh, as as research topics topics too uh traditional forms of uh, if i start with the with the latter question traditional forms of unionism and social organizations i write for, i i write my my things uh, uh, in a context where uh, uh, both traditional forms of unionism and and social organizations we we see very little resistance uh towards uh, for instance, towards the so-called platform uh, 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 urbanism in, in the context of the so-called platform urbanism. So we clearly recognize that um, that uh, you know there are a number of social problems related to uh, to the uh, emergence of of what Hugo actually has called the emergence of platform metropolis. And, and how uh, how basically you can see these 
these extremes uh, in the context of platform metropolis. So those who are uh, benefiting a lot and those who are struggling. And, 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 and from that angle, so that, you know, so that these two, you know, segments of population live very close to each other. It has been very surprising from that angle how little, uh, how re little resistance uh, uh, there has, has, has been, for instance, in, in, in Northern Europe, uh, even if this is, uh, this is already uh, uh, visible. And, and, and it remains an open question also how to, how to mobilize uh, resistance and, and, uh, and, and how to, how to, how to somehow, somehow channel and focus uh, that resistance in the context of, 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 uh, of the platform uh, of the platform metropolis. I think Ugo also uh, is able to join this discussion uh, regarding regarding this question. But I think it's it's a fundamental fundamental uh, question regarding urban government governance, uh, austerity, and um, uh, this is uh, also very interesting in the context of of the so called uh, start up urbanism. Um, I read it uh, in, 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 in the Finnish context again, but also I think uh, it has some similar, similar kinds of spices in the context of Italy, so that, that uh, actually the platform uh, urbanism or startup urbanism, uh, it, has, it has emerged also uh, in the context of, of austerity politics somehow. So it has been uh, treated by some of the um, some of the uh, political forces as promising because uh, it carries in itself a relatively uh, little price tag, so that it is bottom up, and it is uh, it, you, you don't have to channel a lot of a lot of money into that public money into that in in order to uh, in order to see some of the uh, some of the benefits. But it's understood as you know through developing the urban as a laboratory, then you know you can you can. Uh, you can somehow then enter the uh, the world of value value creation. So this um, austerity politics then I think has something to do with with those political strategies which very much highlight the the cr creativity of entrepreneurs or entrepreneurialism and you know how how entrepreneurialism solves solves many of the problems we are facing at the moment and 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 it is also these have been discussed in the context of of somehow uh, squeezing the public sector and you know making make it more private and you know to privatize uh, uh, certain certain uh, things certain activities uh, in political societies. So uh, I think both of these are fundamental questions. But this I am afraid that I this is this is these are the only things I can say at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Sami. Um, there are two questions uh, from uh, YouTube. One is Francesco Lelli, who says, uh, th thank you for this interesting uh, webinar. I would like to ask if the asymmetric information could affect uh, knowledge-based economy and in, in which terms? Uh, uh, asymmetric information in, 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 in what respect? Yeah, uh, I, I'm afraid. Uh, I think Francesco Lelli is not. We can uh, think about and if he's uh, uh, still online uh, as a as a. Um, I hope uh, he will specify his question better, uh, because yeah, I agree that asymmetric information uh, is a quite uh, generic term uh, as it stands. Uh, there is, in the meantime, that we receive uh, specifications, more details from Francesco. Uh, Erika Mangione, she asked uh, about the role of university in the knowledge-based economy. Do you think it is an active one? Are universities fostering a, a knowledge-based model? Or on the contrary, university used to be a passive actor? Uh, pushed in the process by other urban actors, so it's active or passive actor. The university. 
Yeah, it's a it's a it's a very fascinating question. Thanks thanks for that. Is it is it an active or passive? Uh, uh, as an actor uh, uh, in the process of knowledge based economization, I think it is it is both uh, both and. Um, uh, we can we can recognize that uh, that. Uh, there, there has been the universities have been also divided internally. Some of the universities divided internally uh, regarding regarding this question. There's a lot of science politics, of course, within uh, within the universities. Some of the disciplines and some of the fields of science and research they recognize clearly that you know they can they can benefit uh, if if in, in case um, uh, you know we let the uh the strategies of the of the economic sector to to clearly you know really penetrate uh, uh institutions of higher education uh, these kind of uh science wars are probably uh, something that characterize uh the process of knowledge based economization too so we cannot we cannot we cannot say that all the universities have become some sort of puppets of of the process of knowledge based economization no that is that is not that is not true but at the same time we can say that some of the, some of the some of the disciplines some of the sectors of science have become more uh, uh, kind of uh, intertwined or associated connected to the um, to the knowledge based economy than uh, than others I, I I can all uh, for instance one example is, is is from the field of of uh, of human or geography which is which is my discipline and um, I can clearly recognize for instance in the context of northern Europe that uh, that uh, there has been a lot uh, emphasis on innovation systems for instance in 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 in, in geography over the past uh, three decades and 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 in 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 so doing also uh, uh, human there has been a lot of willingness in 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 human geography to to very clearly or closely associate the uh, the field uh, the the discipline of human geography with this new uh, new emerging economy and in so doing make the discipline also uh, somehow useful in front of uh, of capitalism. And in front of politics that seeks to foster this form of capitalism, so so it is it is very uh, interesting. At the same time, there are many forces within universities who are opposing this kind of development. The same applies to the ministries ministries of of, of uh, state ministries of of education and culture. I believe there is a lot of you know the, as as always. Uh, the ap state apparatus has been divided in, 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 in front of these questions and there's a lot of politics and political struggle uh, within that. But what is absolutely clear is that, um, that uh, uh, big corporations and big firms, uh, uh, big tech companies, they have been very active also in, in, uh, in somehow uh, funding uh, some segments of universities in order to make them more, uh, uh, let's say, useful in the context of uh, the, econo uh, uh, the economy of innovation, so to speak. Thank you, Sami. We have uh, two more questions. Uh, one from uh, Fabiano Companucci, who is also a researcher uh, in our institute. He's a researcher in uh, applied economics in our uh, institute. And then uh, Sara Karamaski is a postdoc researcher in our institute in urban uh, uh, studies. Okay, please, Fabiano. Yes, <clears throat> thank you, Sami, for your presentation and for the topics you raised. Thank you very much. They are very interesting and very, I'm gonna say they are very important in, at, uh, at the moment. And uh, I would like you, uh, you show uh, to know at the very beginning of the presentation, uh, you show a you show some slide, a slide in which you um, show us uh, the show us the three uh, knowledge circuit. We can say. And I was wondering when, when I saw the, the slide, I was wondering if you consider to use the, the classification in uh, instead of the classification you show us. You saw the classification in symbolic, synthetic, uh, 
and uh, analytic uh, knowledge-based activity. I'm saying so because I think that it is important to use this kind of classification uh, mostly at a subnational level in order to understand the, the possible, the potential relationship between different knowledge-based activities and uh, different kind of territories. So, for instance, urban areas and uh, non-urban areas and, and so on. So that, that's my question. Thank you, Sami. Okay, thanks. Many thanks for this question. Again, it's uh, it's an impor uh, it's an interesting one. So basically, I the, more than uh, understanding this as a question, I understand this as a comment regarding uh, whether you are able to make a, a, a distinction between what you call symbolic, synthetic, and analytic aspects of 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 uh, of the of uh, knowledge intensive. Uh, uh, yeah. Capitalism. I, I. This is an interesting. This is an interesting uh, 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 way to divide, uh, single out different aspects of it. Are you using this kind of division by yourself? Yes, uh, indeed. We 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 realize that there are uh, huge differences about the concentration of this kind of knowledge based activities. For instance, we find out that uh, uh, close when we have. Uh, um, medium-sized urban areas close to um, industrial districts. So synthetic activities are very important because they work with the manufacturing activities. On the contrary, analytical um, knowledge-based activities are, uh, we can say, more footloose. We can find that you spoke now about uh, technopoles. So basically, uh, their localization is, uh, is more footloose. Uh, when I was in Paris, uh, uh, there is a, a very important university and uh, research centers are uh, located in Saclay, which is a uh, municipality, not, with, not uh, within the main center of Paris, but uh, in, uh, in the metropolitan area, you can say. Of course, it's uh, within a, a metropolitan area, so there is the, the urban effect. But, uh, uh, for instance, the, the um, uh, creativity and the symbolic activities, they are, there, there is a, a very important, a significant, statistically significant correlation with the, the dimension, of course, uh, and so the, the urban dimension, we can say. So, uh, yes, I was, uh, I was um, wondering about uh, the use uh, by you of this kind of classification, because when I know you consider uh, geopolitical uh, aspect, and so uh, maybe your start your starting point is is more uh, the, the nation. But when you consider a subnational partition, so uh, I think that this 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 kind of uh, um, classification could uh, help us. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, as I, I told you before, to understand the, the different the, the the relationship between different kind of knowledge based activities and, and territories. Uh, yes, if I may. Uh, yes, I, I I understand what what you mean, and it's a, uh, you know it's an interesting way to to put it. So this kind of localization of localization of, of activities which are central to the knowledge knowledge based economy, and you know how they how they uh, how they um, how they are located as we as we speak. So what is the speciality of that? That you know if you consider sub sub national territories, I think there is also one important aspect in your. In, in your way to somehow classify this and, and you know you know uh, to uh, to study this and it is that uh, uh, I have been trying also to think about the kind of policy messages of, of this kind of work and sometimes we uh, we have this kind of uh, very powerful discourse according to which uh, it all clusters it all concentrates in big cities. Uh, and and then we don't make uh, separations between different activities, and 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 then we easily enter up a situ enter uh, end up making uh, a statement uh, which is very uh, uh, let's say not very empowering for those communities who are outside located outside uh, uh, big cities, for instance. And and I think there is this kind of uh, uh, policy. Uh, policy aspect, which is also very, very important if we want to make the knowledge-based economy uh, more inclusive or also spatially, so that we have to, in order to make it more inclusive spatially, I think we first first have to recognize also how its different, you know, activities are, are located in space. And in that respect, I think your work is very, very important. 
Thank, Thank you very much, Simon. Thank you, Fabiano. Uh, one question, as I said, from uh, Sara Karamaski, and then uh, there is another one from uh, Carlo Imberardi. Okay. Thank yes, you. here I am. Thank you, Sami, for your great presentation. I really enjoyed the topic and the way you uh, present it. Um, I have a question, or probably these are two questions that are quite related. Talking about city ge geopolitics, uh, can you say something more about the difference between the territorial construction of the US, the United States driven uh, knowledge based economization and the, the European driven one? Because I, I think there's a, there might be a difference uh, between these two ways of um, uh, uh, talking about city ge ge geopolitics. And the other question is uh, focusing on the European driven knowledge based economization, which are the most explicit, let's say, tendencies and manifestations of um, uh, European based, uh, European driven uh, knowledge based uh, economization. I don't know if it's clear. Thank you. Do you uh, regarding the latter question? Do you do you uh, do you mean states or regions or cities or? Uh, I would say from both the regional and the urban point of view, uh, from the regional scale, but also on uh, specifically on the urban space. If there are, let's say, um, common manifestations or there are differences and contradictions between the different European countries, um, this is. Uh, the question. Yes, regarding this latter question, I think we have uh, we have different kinds of manifestations uh, across Europe in different places. So uh, we we know that we in different parts of in different parts of Europe we have uh, we have um, we have been building building up science parks and uh, and uh, um, applying the cluster thinking and uh, and reading Porter and reading Florida and. Uh, and uh, been trying to attract the creative class, and uh, and uh, uh, we have been uh, across Europe doing uh, urban planning based on Glaser's idea of, of densification in order to increase pro productivity, and uh, and and so this is across Europe, and and you know of course in different places the manifestations are slightly slightly different. Um, uh, probably, uh, I have been uh, mainly after discussing with uh, uh, with Ugo and reading also some of his work and some some Italian work more more generally. I have been also interested in uh, and also very uh, astonished how much uh, how much this uh, knowledge based economization has taken uh, uh, kind of spatial form in Italy and and how this whole whole discourse of, 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 of smart cities, uh, smart city has how it has actually has become so visible in, in the context of Italy and what is the reason for that. Italy in that sense uh, and some of the Italian cities, Milan and so on are very very interesting cases from, from that angle and I think they quite nicely also uh, the development there epitomizes um, some of the things I, I mentioned. Um, at Finland and, and, and Helsinki city region, for instance, uh, uh, where I'm located, based uh, in, is, is interesting also from, from this angle. This has been uh, characterized by uh, some of these developments I was, I was mentioning and, 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 and clear and pretty um, uh, clearly spoken, outspoken uh, uh, examples how, how to how to generate knowledge intensive capitalism through plays uh, and 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 this is another another one i think there has been also in northern europe interesting dif uh, differences if you think about for instance norway uh, as an example there there has been some some developments which um, clearly reflect or or disclose what i was uh, mentioning in my presentation but at the same time there are uh, the context is different given the you know the economic structure of the state and and the knowledge based knowledge based based economy development has been uh, slightly different but at the same time even though at the level of the norwegian state it has been slightly different uh, oslo again is is somehow uh, also following 
many of these uh, uh, expert knowledges uh, or, or imaginaries, political economic imaginaries of how to how to build uh, Oslo as an attractive place in the global knowledge-based economy. So these are very different, uh, slightly different uh, e examples and. Uh, uh, the the first question you had was very interesting, but now I don't remember the exactly the 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 question. Can you can you mention mention yeah, it again? It was very about, interesting. Yeah, it's again about city politics. Yeah, if you can yeah. say something about the differences between the yeah. U.S. based, um, yeah. let's say, territorial construction of the U.S. driven um, uh, knowledge based economization mm -hmm. compared to the one of Europe, yeah. that probably are different. Yeah. From yeah, yeah, the, the, point of view, yeah. From the point of view, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good. You can say something more. Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, the, I have been criticized for for um, uh, generalizing from the European uh, from the European context too much, and um, it is of course true that I have been uh, I have been observing in Europe and writing writing my things also through Europe, and um, uh, it's it's a fair critique. And also, if you think about, for instance, the, the stra stra strategies, supranational strategies by the European Union, the Lisbon strategy, for instance, uh, which was published some 20 years ago, and how it mentioned that the European Union is going to be created as the leading knowledge-based economy uh, in the world. This kind of uh, strategies we don't find uh, for, from, the, um, from the federal level in the US, for instance. So it is, it, it is uh, slightly, uh, the context is slightly different. But um, uh, we can we can also um, we can recognize that similar kinds of development, uh, some of the developments that uh, have taken place in Europe are also visible in the U.S. Cities, regions, and states in the U.S. continue to compete for talent, tech investments, and and companies, and and they try to many of the cities try to market themselves as perfect locations for key activities of the knowledge-based economy. So this kind of development, of course, is is going on 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 there, uh, and uh, and so it's it's uh, it is also the pervasiveness of of the knowledge of knowledge intensive capitalism is 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 visible there, but I I think that there are also some uh, some some uh, some differences and uh, and and these have to be uh, have to be uh, somehow uh, addressed and and my concept of city geopolitics is is probably taking this uh, uh, Europe o oriented uh, standing so that I tried first I somehow uh, uh, I put this city geopolitics of knowledge based economization against spatial Keynesianism uh, of 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 the 1970s and 80s and and try to find the trying to find key differences between these uh, these two forms of uh, of uh, of urban uh, urban politics uh, of the state, so to, so to speak. So um, uh, probably probably this is what I my, I can I can say at the at, at the moment. But it's a it's a very it's a very good point. Uh, of course, there has been also a lot of critique saying that that it is not only the uh, not it's not only the U.S. U.S. where the knowledge based economization is different compared uh, with Europe. But also, uh, it is different in China. It is, yeah. it is, it is different in, in uh, you name it. But it is interesting to find out that that all kinds of knowledge-based economizations are taking place, for instance, in uh, uh, in in, uh, in 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 the global south. And um, I was just reading uh, some some time ago. A paper regarding re uh, refugee youths at the King King Hussein's business park uh, uh, in Amman, Jordan, and and the paper demonstrated how uh, kind of demonstrated how um, how the training of young people contributes to uh, of knowledge based economization in the context of displacement. And and it showed this study that uh, that young Syrian refugees. We're pursuing uh, pursuing some sort of IT training in 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 coding boot camps in Jordan, and they were very much enmeshed in a new educational field of refugee professional training, uh, 
as a symbol of uh, as a symbol of progress in order to you know that the silicon valley inspired knowledge based economization had entered very interesting marriage uh, with humanitarianism humanitarianism there and and so that this you can find some sort of seeds of knowledge based economization in in very peculiar places actually at the moment yeah thank you thank you so much Sam. thank you thank you sarah for your question uh, yeah, now there is uh, Carlo Inberardi Ferri who wants to make a question. Carlo, please. Yeah, thank you, Hugo. So thank you very much for the very inter interesting talk. So I have just two points. The first one relates to, so you mentioned the role of the state. So I was thinking whether some of the literature on global production networks, and uh, in particular, I'm thinking to, um, for instance, Adrian Smith published a paper on the role of the state in shaping production networks through kind of regularization and so on. And so I was thinking whether this kind of literature talks to to your, to your research, so also uses um, kind of cultural political economy framework. So, so this is the first one. The second one is more related to the concept of knowledge as you presented it. So you, you sort of um, uh, shaped four different definitions of knowledge, right? So like, like the imaginaries of knowledge, the data, and the role of engineers in that. And that was just my question is, well, is there a shift maybe that is happening or not so, uh, in the way we define knowledge? Because I'm thinking, for instance, you, you mentioned tech firms, right? So from the, from the end of the 80s uh, onwards, so there has been this kind of uh, continuous outsourcing of production and manufacturing processes, right, to developing countries. And, and all of a sudden, I mean, in fact, I mean, uh, motivated by the idea to, to focus on more value-added uh, uh, segments of production processes, right? But in fact, even in, in kind of more material sort of manufacturing and production, there is in fact embedded a lot of knowledge there. So my question is, uh, um, is there, are we witnessing or not to a shift in how we define knowledge and maybe even more recent developments with what's happening in the, I mean, with the Trump administrations and uh, and so on, is so to bring it back these segments of production is maybe reflects this thing or or maybe not. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much for this. It's, it's actually a very broad, <laughs> very broad question. You 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 have very very relevant. Of course, I I'm afraid that I don't, uh, especially the latter part of the. The question i don't i don't i don't have any any answers uh the role of the state and how it contributes to uh uh the global production networks i think it's 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 very very interesting in 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 many respects um the the relational world of geopolitics i was mentioning in in my presentation i, I this uh, global value chains I think it it has been very very interesting how this uh, how this shift is uh, is is taking place and how this is constantly re uh, renegotiated and and how state governments are are uh, kind of rationalizing uh, you know uh, in political strategies how, what 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 to do uh, in in terms of uh, what kind of activities are needed in 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 uh, in particular state territories and and you know how to how to cope with the contemporary uh, comp contemporary situation? So, um, for instance, what is the role of research and development, and can 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 we can we basically uh, uh, support through policies development, which uh, in which companies ca somehow move uh, research and development uh, out from let's say from uh, from Germany. Or from uh, from Sweden or something like that. And what is the response of of of, of government uh, to this kind of uh, attempts? Because one part, one clear aspect of knowledge based economization, as I as I understand it, has been that that um, those activities which represent the uh, the upper parts of of the global value chain, where a lot of economic value is being uh, produced. Uh, uh, have been are usually considered as very very fundamental for for the so-called advanced states, and and it's very interesting how this uh, how the fact that uh, that the research and development and and the required expertise also exists 
uh, in Asia, in, in India, in different places, also in Global South, what you normally consider Global South, and, and how, how this, this shift then um, uh, uh, leads to uh, probably new kinds of state strategies or even, uh, even, um, even new regulations dealing with, uh, dealing, dealing with companies. So I, I think it's a, it's a fundamental, uh, f fundamental question. Um, there is uh, one uh, dealing with the, the second second question you had. I think it was very interesting to. It is also interesting to uh, recognize that that the, the world of, uh, uh, as was pointed out by uh, by one of my critiques in a different seminar. I think it's a very valuable point that how the how the uh, the world of of the so-called the Silicon Silicon Valley world has how it has been changing also um, uh, internally and and how how it is taking new forms and and the knowledge they are uh, um, producing there and 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 uh, that knowledge how it is then used in commercial products and 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 the type of products they are innovating there and 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 the knowledge component and what is the nature of that and and it is very interesting uh, only recently we have recognized that how much for instance the silicon valley has been uh has become uh, uh somehow uh geared around uh, all kinds of surveillance uh production of all kinds of surveillance systems and you know you talk about face recognition recognizing you know face recognizing systems and i tech the so called i techniques and 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 how this kind of new Silicon Valley world also it is is emerging as um, uh, as as a new type of uh, um, so it differs qualitatively probably from the from the earlier uh, uh, earlier Silicon Valley so that even the core is somehow taking new forms and and probably the uh, the the content of uh, of the of the signifier knowledge also how it is it is also changing along the along the road and uh, and uh, this kind of techno techno militarization uh, kind of remilitarization of, of of the silicon valley is probably something uh, worth worth understanding also uh, as as part of the as part of the evolution of the of the process of knowledge based economization Okay, thank you um, for your uh, answer, uh, Sami, and uh, for your question, uh, Carlo. Uh, uh, Francesco Lelli, who is writing from uh, YouTube, uh, he has clarified this question about uh, asymmetric information. He, he says, not, not each actor has the same level of skills or competencies, so it's reasonable to think that not everyone perceives knowledge in the same way. Which consequences it has on knowledge-based uh, economy uh, development? So it's about uh, actors and uh, skills and competencies. Yes, actors, skills, and competencies, and skills and skills and competencies. What is what is very interesting? I can I can say on a very general level that what is very interesting. And thanks for the question, by the way. Uh, it's. Um, uh, also, something that that uh, is is I think worth uh, worth studying is that how how this whole notion of useful knowledge and useful skills how skills how it is also changing all the time uh, along the road and 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 this also it marks the basic fact that the, the knowledge intensive capitalism is constantly changing you know and 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 it takes new forms and and as part of this. Uh, and change and mutation, if you like, uh, uh, all kinds of knowledges are, are are valued over others, and 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 skills and and what I have been recognizing, for instance, uh, in in the context of uh, of uh, of uh, of what what uh, what I call uh, or, or in the context of platform, uh, the urban as as a platform and. It is it is interesting to recognize, for instance, that um, that uh, that uh, the kind of the, 
the field of skills. If you, if for instance, in Finland in the 1990s, it was all about uh, engineers and particular uh, skills related in related to engineering, electronics partic in particular. But how this has this field of useful skills or understanding of useful skills, how it has been uh, widening, perhaps, so that this basic engineer skills deal dealing with uh, digital techniques and, and uh, electronics, how it has remained there, but how at the same time all kinds of other, uh, other skills have also uh, gained relevance and, and uh, related to communication, for instance, communication type of skills and, and, and all kinds of uh, artistic and visual and related to design and and so it, ha it has been interesting how this process of knowledge-based economization is all also about, uh, also about uh, including all kinds of uh, skills and knowledges into the, into the effort of, of, uh, of uh, value production. And this has been very, very, uh, very interesting. And this is probably the only thing I can say regarding your, your, uh, your good question. Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, Sami. I have also uh, uh, one question. Uh, you already uh, touched on uh, briefly, I would say, on uh, on Finland. Uh, I think Finland is a fascinating country for uh, for Italians, and I think also elsewhere. But in Italy, we in the media, in the news media, we often uh, hear about Finland, especially with reference to 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 school, to the school system, to primary education. Okay, because of uh, its advanced and very open model of uh, uh, of uh, education for children, basically. Um, um, uh, I, I want to ask in, if you can provide also some kind of uh, biograph autobiographical uh, uh, background. Uh, 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 your interest in uh, urbanization of the knowledge-based economy and the role of the state. You, you, you started your uh, uh, career and your scientific production as a scholar of uh, geopolitics. Okay, and then you, you are in a way shifting towards uh, uh, also the, the urban uh, dimension of uh, geopolitics and geoeconomics. Uh, so, how, uh, in what ways this has to do also with the, uh, the evolution of uh, Finland uh, as a country and uh, 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 where uh, uh, Helsinki has perhaps become, Helsinki became very famous for Nokia. Uh, well, Finland and uh, uh, Helsinki, and then uh, also for the in more recent years for the startup culture, for the new universities uh, uh, um, uh, promoting this startup culture like Alto University, and also for architecture design. But in the end, uh, Helsinki is still uh, uh, relatively, according to global uh, parameters, it's a rel relatively small uh, city. It has 600,000 uh, uh, people living there. Um, and uh, so it, it's a kind of a very uh, highly concentrated cluster of knowledge, uh, in a way, as a city. It's a very uh, 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 high-end uh, service, uh, uh, service uh, city specializing in high-end, uh, uh, highly specialized, uh, very knowledge-intensive uh, 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 sector. So, uh, in what ways, I mean, your uh, personal trajectory as a researcher and as a geography reflects also uh, this trajectory of uh, your own country and of uh, Helsinki itself? So, in what ways your research, the fact that you have been living and doing research there is generative of your own research interests? Well, as you, as, as you almost uh, already uh, answered to your own question, it, it, is, it is absolutely, absolutely clear that uh, these two trajectories are, are very much connected to each other. So that uh, the trajectory of the, of the state and, and Helsinki and Finland and so on, and my own, uh, the, the, you know, the development of my own interests. And, uh, and uh, it definitely, you know, I, I cannot, I, I cannot hide hide that, and I think it is also very often the case in geography and uh, in in regional studies and urban studies. Uh, the place uh, has a has a major effect on 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 your on your thinking, and and this is how how our uh, thinking is spatially constituted also, and it's an important factor here. And 
then it, it becomes uh, the question of particular and universal and how to generalize from the context and and uh, i you know it's always always the case very uh, the geographical differentiation is uh, is of course uh, this is a methodological thing of course but you know the geographical differentiation of of this planet is 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 of course have, has always been uh, a challenge uh, for uh, for for geography and and i think the same uh, the same applies to my work so that what are the what are the universal features of of these conceptualizations, and what are very much some of these are probably very much restricted to the Finnish experience and to the experience in Helsinki, and 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 it's always balancing between the kind of particular and the universal, and you know how to how to how to find your way. But you are absolutely right, Hugo. I I think I I, I have been very much influenced by my by my experience in 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 Finland and. Uh, of course, my work would not exist, I believe, without without these experiences. But uh, my uh, my question, then I have a little question for you. Do you do you think that there is a way to escape that? <laughs> yeah, I think it's quite uh, unavoidable uh, as geographers to be influenced by, and as uh, especially qualitative geographers, but also I would say also those uh, dealing with more quantitative uh, data. I think it, in general, I mean, as social scientists, I think uh, it's quite uh, uh, inevitable to be influenced by uh, our life experiences and what happens in the wider context of our uh, uh, livelihood. So, yeah, but uh, uh, that's true, I think, especially in uh, perhaps in some geographical uh, context, but uh, maybe it's uh, it is the case everywhere. <laughs> so let's continue the conversation in uh, future uh, occasions and uh, uh, I don't know if anyone has uh, uh, any uh, very important uh, uh, question uh, to make in uh, very last minute or we can uh, uh, stop here uh, okay I think we yeah we have exceeded uh, our uh, time limit uh, so uh, I thank uh, uh, Professor Moise, I thank Sami uh, for uh, uh, joining us in this webinar series. Uh, I hope you all uh, enjoyed uh, his talk and uh, our uh, uh, debate and uh, uh, conversation. And uh, okay, thank you. I hope uh, we will have you in uh, L'Aquila in, in person uh, finally when this will be possible uh, uh, very soon, hopefully. Thanks, Sami. Thank you very much for the questions and comments. Thank you. Bye to bye bye everyone. Bye bye. bye, -bye.